Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Central Intelligence presented by Off the Glass. Don't forget to follow us along on Twitter at OTG Basketball. I'm Matthew Handel and back with another episode joined by my buddy Corey Waldron. What's up, man? Matt, how you doing? You know, we're here on a Saturday instead of a Friday, but you know, life throws us some curveballs, so we have to adjust. But right, we're ready to bring you a good episode of Central Intelligence. It doesn't matter what day, man. We're like you said, we're ready and we're we're excited. We got a good episode, so you know, let's let's get rocking. So last week, uh, we were obviously doing this on a Saturday, but it's only one day back. But last week, what what's been going on around the division? You know, anything surprising or not surprising, or, or what's the recap of last week in the division? Well, uh, the past week, the Bulls led the division going 3-1 and one with a uh, win over the Golden State Warriors on TNT. Their 18th straight win on TNT. We have to make note of that. Yeah, that's impressive. Uh, the Cavs and Pacers both went 2-2. Two and two, The Bucks went 2-3. and three, And the Pistons went 1-2. and two. And, uh, Matt, you know, we got to talk about the hottest topic in the division, and that's the Cleveland Cavaliers. They brought in Darren Williams last week. They re-signed Derek Williams for the year. I think they broke a record possibly even within the last week. Matt, what's going on in Cleveland? Well, they're now the favorites to win the NBA title. Um, not a, I mean, a lot of people have been saying it, but, a lot, you know, like they should. Some people are still sticking with the Warriors. But, okay, think of this, Corey. So they, they picked up, like you said, they picked up the two, two D wills, right? They just picked up Darren, but they've had Derek for – the two 10 days and I'm assuming they're going to sign him for the rest of the season, but they don't have Kevin Love and they don't have J.R. Smith and they lost to the Boston Celtics team that many think are quote unquote going to give them a, give the Cavs a run for that number one spot. They lost to him in a, in a super close game without two of their best players. Um, and LeBron even gave Darren Williams the, the potentially game tying game tying three pointer at the very end. So that's how much trust LeBron already has in Darren Williams. So to me, they're the favorites um, to win the title because when they get, when they're fully healthy, you know, it's, it's over. But like you said, uh, they did break a record last night. They 25, three pointers, which is ridiculous. Um, that's the most in NBA history. LeBron even went, he shot 60% from three, which is crazy. He went six for 10. Kyrie had over 40 and LeBron had 38, but, um, so that you know, I don't know to you. Like, did you think they were going to break that record if there's going to be a team? Because I know a lot of people probably would have said the Rockets, and the Rockets came super close earlier in the week. They had, I think, it's, twenty. Um, yeah, it's 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 funny you say that because I remember watching the Rockets versus the Clippers game when they scored 108 points after three quarters, and I was thinking, wow, like this team could break the record. And then I didn't even think about the Cavs, and then last night I'm watching the game, and they're just draining three after three. And it's just like, wow, LeBron's hitting threes, Kyrie's hitting threes, Kyle Korver, of course, is hitting threes, Channing Fry. It was just the entire <laughs> collection of Cavs Richard players. Richard Jefferson, just insert name here, yeah. they made at least two threes. Like Derek Williams yeah, it, it, is it, it, not really a three-point shooter, but he's been shooting a lot of threes with the Cavs. He went three for yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to be honest, he might be the greatest draft pick of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I know me and Harris uh, me and Harris were texting about the Rockets uh in the third quarter because they were just going off. And like you said, it, it definitely looked like they were about to break the record, but they only they ended with 20. It was it was weird, but and then the Cavs just I don't know, that record that's super impressive. And if LeBron's gonna shoot 60% from three, then you're probably gonna break that record in a game. Um but it it's cool. Um but I think like that's just a side story, obviously. Like that, the bigger story is like, what do you what do you think about that take? Do you think they're favorites? Because I, I mean, it's a super interesting oh, take, and I think yeah, everyone's yeah. different on it. You know, um, I don't. If Kevin Durant is fully healthy, I do not believe the Cavs are the favorites. I just don't. Uh, I think the Cavaliers are fantastic. And I think this is probably the best team LeBron James has ever had, getting ready for playoff time. That's no doubt. Wait, and we have to throw but, this. Uh, we have to throw this in too before we. They just signed Andrew Bogut too. We definitely can't. Right, play. right. We, we haven't even seen Andrew game. Bogut yet in the Cavs uniform. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He just keeps getting pieces. There's tons. There's tons of talent on that Cavs roster. I still look at the Warriors as favorites. Just I, the look at their bench, though. 
Like I said, well, no, you're right. They, they have a they have a lack of energy. Like that's just the thing I'm looking at. Like obviously, I still think that the Warriors starting lineup with KD healthy is is better than the Cavs when they're both healthy. Um, I I picked the Warriors starting lineup, but that bench, the Warriors bench is just bad. That yeah. and I think you gotta note too uh, the defensive ratings. Matt, yeah. you know, the Warriors are still ranked first. The Cavs are ranked 20th. Even yeah. last night when they broke that record, they gave up 130 points to the Atlanta Hawks. They only won 135 to 130. Yeah, and they came back, too. They were up by, like, 10 with yeah. like three minutes. They're definitely a bad defensive team, the Cavs. But... It, it's concerning because if the, if the Warriors get hot, like we know they can't, they're going to be trouble for Cleveland. Because yeah. Cleveland, I don't think Cleveland can sustain – that kind of high high power offense. I don't know. I think that's I, their strength. Their strength is breaking it down to a half court set and playing tough defense. Yeah. No, that's it's the the finals this year, if it is the Cavs or Warriors, if it's a rematch, it's gonna be, I'd say, one of the fastest paced finals. Because both teams want to play fast paced. I mean, I think whoever slows it down might win. Because like you said, I mean, that's gonna be the advantage of the Warriors though, because they can play both ways, you know? They can run their sets. They they have amazing passing, and their screen their screen game is top notch. So I think the Cavs are gonna have to keep it fast paced. But I just the bench to their, me their moving screen game is top notch. <laughs> okay, you're not wrong, but the NBA is just fall, <laughs> falling into that. It's I I don't think I've seen a a nice screen set since Timmy Duncan was playing last year. It's really funny when you watch a game and you see someone set a screen and they just move their feet and you're thinking, all right, that's a move and pick. You can't do that. That's just the same with the NBA, dude. Like all the rules, like, yeah, that's a travel. Nope. That that's a double dribble. Like that's Don't a- get me started on travels, Matt. Like that's why Leonard Travel had a game winning <laughs> shot the other night against the Pacers. Don't get me started. Dude, it's not even I don't want to bag on the NBA, but they they the refs stand right there and like I can see this from my my couch. Like on the television, which is the camera's way back. So if you're a ref, like you're right there. This this may be the the worst year of officiating I've seen in, in the NBA in a very long time. I can't tell you how many times we've got on that report the next day, and the NBA has been, oh yeah, we got this call wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't get call- that many calls wrong in a season. I mean, I understand it's human error; it happens. It's uh, it's frustrating though at times. I'll say this: when you can't tell the difference between the All Star game officiating and the regular season game. Then that's that's pretty bad. Like if, Yikes. if that's I, a shot. I respect I, that. Shot. I mean, I'm just saying, like if abs out here, dude. If you were okay, so if you were a fan, like if you've never watched a basketball game before, and you're watching from like, okay, in America or like overseas somewhere, and you're like, you tune in, you're like, okay, I'm gonna watch the NBA bat All Star game. This seems pretty cool. You're watching it, and that was your first game ever, right? And then a week later, you tune in, you watch the Cavs Celtics game or like some big game. You're like, okay, I, I'm kind of interested in basketball now. You could not, you could not tell a difference. Honestly, the ref, the, the officiating is so bad. I mean, the, you could probably be like, oh, they're trying a little harder in this game. That that's well, that's nice, but I just think the officiating is so bad. And the star, don't even get me started. Like, obviously, the stars get so much treatment. Like, it's. It's stupid, but we could talk about that forever. I don't know. You know, I, I know we 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 were gonna change topics into a, a different discussion about who the Celtics' toughest matchup would be in the playoffs. But man, I have a question because you mentioned the Celtics. What were your takeaways from the Celtics versus Cavs? Uh, well, are the are the Celtics the biggest threat to the Cavaliers in the East? See, I wrote an article about that for OTG, Corey. Then let me just throw that out there—a little free advertising. Go check that out on OTG Basketball. Uh, I'm uh, not going to lie to you. I gave it a red, which is <laughs> what sparked my memory to bring this up. See, yeah, the, the Celtics are the biggest, the most intriguing matchup for me because, like I talked about, if you look at the his, the past, and obviously you can't you can't take just the regular season because when you get in the playoffs, it's a whole different beast. But if you look at the past history and when the Cavs have played the Celtics, Wizards, and Raptors, because right now that's my biggest, the biggest three for me. Um, the, the Celtics have just given them the biggest, the biggest challenge. Um, they've they're they've won a game against them. Um, it was it was on their home court, and they have another game to play. But that game, when you watch it on TV, Corey, it, it just felt like that playoff atmosphere. Now, like I talked about. 
Kevin Love and J.R. Smith were gone. So that's kind of concerning for the Celtics because they barely beat the Cavs. Um, and that was Darren Williams' first game too. So Darren Williams will be um, a lot better with this team. And they're going to get Bogut too. So I don't know, dude. The, the Cavs, are, they're just getting so much better. And LeBron's – he's spoiled right now with all these pieces. So – I don't ever want to hear LeBron say I need more pieces for the next like five years because. Wow. Okay. A little dude, easy there on the five. No, window. dude, dude, this team. Darren uh, Williams, Andrew Bogut won't be in the league five years from now. No, I know. I'm just saying. No, I don't. No, no, they're. You're right. They're. They're extremely tough. And uh, my takeaways from when I was watching the Celtics, Cavs, uh, the Celtics don't have enough rebounding. No. I'm sorry. A team with that huge of a deficiency in a certain area of play, um, especially the Cavs getting Andrew Bogut. I know the Celtics probably – I mean, they really could have used Andrew Bogut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they could have used Terrence Jones as well. I'm, I'm uh, slightly disappointed that Danny Ainge didn't make any moves this year to better this roster. They needed it. Because man. they have a huge hole of rebounding. And I think when Kevin Love comes back, um, in a seven-game series, the Cavs win five or six games every time. Yeah. because of the rebounding. If the uh, if the Celtics didn't if the, the Celtics don't be careful, dude, they could get swept. I, I believe Matt they got out rebounded by like fifteen rebounds, and you have to think if Kevin Love's in there, he gives you at least twelve or thirteen yeah. against that bad rebounding unit of the and, Celtics. And throw Bogut on the second unit too, right? And I, I think the thing that a lot of people are talking about that I would have to agree with is the Celtics are just you know another star away. You know they missed out on Paul George. I. Th- Dude, if Paul George wouldn't went to the Celtics, oh my gosh. Well, yeah, we talked about that on the last episode of Central Intelligence that we thought Paul George would have been a great addition. This matchup would have been insane. This matchup uh, would have been so fun to watch. I mean, they still would have been pretty bad at rebounding. They would have had that. But if they would have got, what if, I mean, think about this Paul George and Bogut go to Celtics. Whew. Yeah, or, I mean, uh, I, know, I know it's a hypothetical thing, but that would have been so Yeah, fun. I mean, this offseason, I think, too, we're looking at. I know we're this is not our division. We're looking at probably Gordon Hayward or still even Jimmy Butler or Paul George being traded yeah. at the draft night to the Celtics. And I think that's what the Celtics are doing. They're just looking ahead. They're not really trying to win it all this year. It's kind of like they've uh, conceded to the uh, LeBron James reign in the East. They're kind of just letting him have his moment. It's bad for the league, though. Like, it is bad. Like you, when- you, don't, you don't like seeing teams not trying to better their rosters and win a chip. Because when everyone, everyone, like the casual fan and everything, they're like, Dude, NBA sucks because there's no, there's no uh, parity in the league. It's we know it's LeBron versus Steph. It's the Warriors versus the Cavs, and I think the only way to change that is to have the teams like you talked about not wave the white flag and say, "Well, it's just look at it. We don't, we can't really do much this year. It's look at LeBron's team. Like that's like the worst mindset, especially if you're the you're the second best team in the East, especially when you're the Celtics and you have that." Uh... They've had that long time rivalry with LeBron. The Celtics seem yeah. to always be that team that LeBron has struggled against. Yeah. So you never like seeing that, especially yeah. a team with such a legacy as well as the Celtics. That's true. I mean, look at the Lakers, dude. They're they're trying to make moves to get back to that legacy, and they're not even in the playoff talk. So if you're the second best team in the, and you have Isaiah Thomas in his prime doing huge things, like you just I just thought they should have acted on that more and you know, like you said, it's never fun to see a team that's that the good and could potentially be even that much better to kind of kind of just give up and not make that move, especially when they had the chance. Yeah, I mean, obviously, none of us will know. Besides, freaking Woj with the Woj bombs, you're never gonna know what's going on behind the scenes. So it's kind of hard, to, you know, figure that out. But I mean, from from our standpoint, it kind of looked like they could have pulled the trigger on Paul George. They could. Uh, I don't know if they could have pulled the trigger on Paul George. I know Larry Bird said he, he probably wasn't going to trade Paul George, but they they could have taken the route the Cavs took. Because you got to think the Cavs made their roster better not through trades, through uh, the waiver wire, yeah. through players getting waived, and the Celtics had a chance to add either, like I said, Terrence Jones or Andrew Bogut. I, th- I don't and, think he, I don't think you can blame him for the Bogut thing though. Like no, not Bo- not Bogut, but Terrence Jones for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Terrence Jones by no means makes the Celtics contenders or like championship a championship team, but he adds grit and uh, grit and rebounding. And let's not forget uh, a few months ago when the Pelicans took on the Cavs and Terrence Jones had his way with LeBron James. Yeah, 
So it would have been it was it would have been nice for the Celtics to pick him up, I think. Well, Corey, we talked about Paul George potentially going to the, the Celtics, but he's on the Pacers right now for the folks that, you know, may be confused. But <laughs> <laughs> and the Pacers, um, there's one of three teams, the Bulls, Pacers, and Detroit. They're six, seven, eight. Um, Bulls, Pacers, Detroit in that order in the standings. So I want to ask you this, man. So we've been talking about the Cavs a lot, and they're they're on the high horse for a lot of people, and I mean, kind of rightfully so. But if if you had to pick out of those three teams, I mean, you could do it out of a hat if you wanted to, but I, I know you probably have better reasons than that. But the first round, um, if the Cavs likely hold on to that number one uh, spot, which team do you think and will play the Cavs in the first round? And which I'll ask you, which team would you want to see? Which one would be the most exciting for you? Um. Oh, th- see, this is this is tough because uh, the Pistons got swept last year in the first round, and I believe the Pistons play again. They would again get swept. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just they don't have enough scoring to keep up with the Cavs. Uh, Chicago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, it's, I was gonna laugh about this one because they don't they wouldn't stand a chance either. But it would be cool. It would be very cool to see. Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade again against LeBron in the playoffs. I, I can't remember the last time we saw Wade versus LeBron in the playoffs, so that would be interesting. True. Um, I think the toughest matchup for the Cavs arguably would be the Pacers. Yeah. No uh, doubt. Paul George. And the fact that the Pacers have found some rhythm since the All-Star break. You know, they beat the Rockets, lost by one point to the Spurs. Uh, since that young has come back, they've looked better on offense. they found some more rhythm. So they are – and Monte Ellis got knees again out of nowhere. He has like six <laughs> dunks in the last five games. I'm not really sure where those came from. But uh, he just went to Germany over the All-Star break. Um, <laughs> but I, they they probably would be the toughest matchup for the for the Celtic – oh, my God. Uh, for the Cavs, that is. Um, but I, I likely think – I strongly believe it will probably be the Bulls they face in the first round. Really, no, I believe they'll face. I, I think it's a no-brainer. I think you're right. It's definitely the Pacers because they have Paul George. They have that star power. Obviously, I mean the Pistons don't even have that. They have they have Andre Drummond, but he's nowhere near the level of Paul George or Jimmy Butler. I think that if if the Bulls wouldn't have traded Taj and Doug McDermott, that would have made the first round matchup a way more intriguing with the Bulls and the Cavs. But now that you lose them. Like you said, the nice little backstory of D Wade and you know playing LeBron. But to me, the Pacers would be the most intriguing matchup. I don't think the Pacers will play him. Um, it to me, it's either I think, dude, I think the Heat could come and take the eight spot. I know that's not in our question, but um, the Pistons. It's probably going to be the Pistons to me, which is the worst matchup for out of the three. Um, but I don't know. I. I yeah, it's kind of to me. It's kind of a no-brainer. I want to see the Pacers play them, but I, I like I like the Miami take. I got I I really do like the Miami take. They've been playing some great basketball, and Eric Spolstra. Uh, we've really seen. And this again, this is not part of our division, but we have to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, and Eric Spolstra is doing an incredible job in Miami. You know, you lose Dwayne Wade. Uh, of course, Chris Bosh has the terrible heart condition right now, and you. You keep winning with guys like Deion Waiters, and uh, Whiteside has shown that he's a real deal center, and Goran Dragic. Um, he's a- I, I think it. I think it would be a good storyline though, Matt, to have the Miami Heat starring Deion Waiters facing LeBron James oh, in the first round. God. I think it'd be very entertaining. Underdog. I mean, they're only a game and a half back at that eight spot, and who knows with Detroit? So. To me, it's between. Who knows with the Hornets? There's a lot of teams right out there knocking on the door. Even the Knicks, arguably, are still in the playoff. Stop. Stop. Hey, hey, you know, I have to bring it up. They're only three games out. Stop. No, 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 no. Four games out. Yeah, four and a half. Come on. Don't even, don't even let them. They lose a quicker four games than the Pistons did. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Oh, my God. The Knicks lose a quick four games. Honestly, it's it's a battle between who doesn't want to go to the playoffs. It's like who's gonna throw this away? Because I yeah, mean, who wants who wants a uh, an early vacation? Yeah, I could see the heat. It's almost like no one wants. To, like, no, I don't want it. You take the eight seed. You want to really play the Cavs? Like, I'm just trying to go to Hawaii or the Bahamas or something. 
<laughs> no, I yeah, I, I'd have to yeah, between the three, definitely Indiana. There's but I don't know if we'll get that. I don't think we I, will. I think, I think the think Bulls the I think the Bulls and Pacers can flip back and forth for that six and seven spot, but it's gonna be the Pistons or the Heat for me in that eight spot. I you see I think the Bulls, even though they went three and one this past week, like we said earlier in the show, um and they beat the Warriors and held them only eighty seven points, which I, that was such a weird game to watch. It was a beautiful game. If it I was very strange <laughs> to see how bad Clay and Steph have been from shooting from deep. But um, you know, I, I think the Bulls are in trouble actually of missing the playoffs. I gotta be honest with you; they don't have any shooting. I just yeah. I can't see this team sustaining weeks of going three and one like this. I just can't see it. Jimmy Butler's back is gonna hurt because he's been carrying this freaking team all year, dude. Like it's it, they're gonna make the playoffs if he snaps, but if he doesn't, then they're gonna miss it. And D Wade's gonna have a nice vacation. I mean, even the game against the Warriors, like Wade only had twelve points. You know, Wade yeah. is not the Wade that we saw. In it the was a time. super weird game, dude. The box score was super weird. Like when I looked at the box score, I thought Jimmy was gonna have a ton, but I mean, it was low scoring anyway. But I w- I wouldn't be totally surprised if the Bulls ended up missing the playoffs, and we yeah. saw the. Uh, the Heat slip in as an eight seed. The Pistons actually play as a seven seed. I wouldn't be shocked by that. No, yeah, I can definitely get on board with that for sure. So, Matt, you know, normally we do the game of the night for Friday, but we're here on a Saturday. So, you know, Saturday night, I like to party. What game am I going to prolong <laughs> my party to watch? Hey, uh, you you got to show up fashionably, fashionably late to a party anyway, but tonight you're probably going to have to show up a couple hours late, Corey. Because we – okay, listen to this. We got Cavs going into Miami, a team that we just talked about. If I had to throw out the, the line, so who's favored in this, what what would you say the, the line would be? The Cavs, Cavs are Cavs, – Cavs by uh, 12. Yeah, that's the thing. I jumped on here, and I'm scrolling through the games tonight. I'm like, oh, Cavs heat, that's probably a decent game. Maybe not. Miami by one. <laughs> The wow, Miami, the Miami Heat on the Saturday are favored. The cat and the Cavs. I'm. I LeBron's gonna play. Uh, everyone's playing except Kevin. Are they in Miami? Yeah, but the Heat by one. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me right now. I think it's Dion. <laughs> I like it. I and really like the, it. The headline is Cavaliers will face a different Heat team in rematch. What earlier this season looked like a major mismatch now seems dot 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 intriguing. <laughs> So the heat the heater gaining some ground. ESPN's throwing him a one point favorite. Um, wow. I'm not I'm not jumping on board with that. I'm taking the Cavs. I'm taking the Cavs. I'll give the okay. I'll give the Heat like seven. So I'll go Cavs by seven or eight. I'm not. I'm definitely not taking the Heat. I'm not taking that that one point spread. I'd take that all day. Um, you know what I can you know what I can say though, Matt. We did just see the Cavs make twenty five threes. So it's very likely they would make. Only like nine or ten. No, they're gonna make at least twenty. They're making at least twenty. Wow. You're crazy. I swear. They're You're coming out with the hottest with bold takes in the league. They, I respect it. Man, I hey, twenty three pointers tonight. LeBron's gonna get a triple double. He already had an, almost another one last night. So he's gonna get a triple double. They're gonna make, play another thirty eight minutes tonight. Twenty eight threes probably. Darren Williams gonna play well. He's had a seven assists last night. But uh, and I think Deion Waiter is going to play well. He, he's probably – it's either going to be the Cavs by like seven or eight or Deion Waiter is going to hit a freaking <laughs> game winner <laughs> All right. at the buzzer. So you ready, you ready for the take? All right, let's hear it. Wait, before, I, before you go, before you say something, you know what I think it is that Miami with the one-point advantage? I think that they're like – they're thinking it's going to be like 99 to 90. 98 and Deion Waiters is going to come down and just bury a step back J in Kyrie's eye at the buzzer. That's they're going to win by one. I think that's why they gave him that. But I want let me hear yours. Let me hear your take. I'm saying, I'm saying Miami. Oh my God. By five. Oh Actually, my God. no, oh not God. by five. By four. Miami oh. by four. Oh my gosh. And you want, this is why. This is, hey, this is a rational take. All right. Oh yeah. The, okay. Miami didn't play last night, right? To my yeah. knowledge. <laughs> okay. Uh, they might have played last night, actually. I think they played Dallas. Uh, they uh, might have played Dallas. They played the Magic last night. Anyway. And they lost. 
Yes. No, they won. They. Oh yeah, they they lost. They lost by eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They lost. Uh, yeah, I met, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But now they're back home, and I'm saying Miami by four because LeBron and company played a a a tough game last night where they scored 135 points, and LeBron <laughs> and Kyrie had to do a, a lot, and they were both very efficient. So I'm gonna say the Cavs are you know they're traveling, they're a little out of gas. So I'm saying Miami. 101 to 97. Oh, my gosh. So you think that the Cavs are they're going down in the nice, you know, sunny Miami. They're going to take a take a nice one-day vacation off. No. I, I, I'm saying LeBron, as he said earlier this season, every game is a struggle to play nowadays. I think today he woke up. He's like, wow, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little tired. I'm a little sore. No, I think no. I have back tonight. I mean, he woke up today and he was watching the highlights and he's like, "Dang, I went six for ten last night. I'm the I'm the MVP of the league." And you know, here's the thing: I'm going down to Miami. They probably still hate me there. I got to show out. Me and my boy Kyrie, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna drop like combined seventy points. Jesus, you are crazy. <laughs> my team's cool. dropping twenty threes tonight. I mean, we're showing the league that record wasn't just a fluke. You know, we can do this. To your credit, this is this is those kind of games that when you're you know trying to get chemistry and stuff, you can't afford to lose. Though I'll no, give you that. No, you you don't want a loss in March to the Miami Heat, who are twenty and thirty four currently. Corey, you want to know what's crazy about this game? Just take it. You want to? Uh, I'll just let I you know because you would never guess this. But during our show, I, I will. So people, when you hear this, I just refresh the ESPN app. And now Cleveland is favored by one. So somebody, somebody on ESPN well, staff woke up and was like, crap, dude, I accidentally set Miami for the one-point favorite. So I think by the game time, 7 o'clock tonight, Central Time, this is going to be Cavs by six. You, you can see though how much faith they have in either team that's only a one-point favorite for <laughs> They're going back whoever and forth. They're like, dude, yeah. they're flipping coins right now at the ESPN headquarters. They're just like, yeah. Miami – Heads, head says Miami by one. Tail says Cavs by one. Damn it, it's heads. Put Miami. <laughs> oh, wait. I just got tail with the Cavs. Yeah, they're changing it. And then whatever, they're just going to leave it at game time. All right. We're going out Miami by one. That's what it is. Nah, but that, so that, I mean, as much as we joke around, that, that could be a good game. I mean, I think if you would have told uh, me uh, the Cavs heat would have been a good game before the All-Star break, I would have definitely laughed at you. But it just depended no, I'm, when, I'm, when you got I'm me with the heat intrigued. team. I'm, I'm well, definitely intrigued. Steve. Okay, so uh, that, usually it's a Friday, but we're starting our Saturday off, if you want, at seven o'clock with that game, eight o'clock your time. But what a, going ahead? I mean, now we have uh, one day shorter because we're on Saturday, like we talked about. But going ahead, what what's a game that, like I said, we should circle on our calendar. We should, you know, get the whole family together. We should we should sit down. This should be a big deal. I, I I've been waiting all show to bring up this matchup. Because we've already made mention to these two teams earlier in the podcast. Shockingly enough, on Monday, this Monday, <laughs> a few short days away compared to our Friday show, the Pistons and Chicago Bulls play. Their series series, their, se- <laughs> their season series, <laughs> do not edit that out. Their season series is tied at one game apiece. So these are two teams. He's battling, obviously, for the eight and seven and six seed. This could be a very important matchup come April. So, Pistons Bulls Monday, ladies and gentlemen, Reggie Jackson <laughs> could be benched very soon. Oh my gosh! Luggage play. Dwayne Wade is thirty-five, <laughs> but, he, but he's hungry. Jimmy <laughs> Butler wants Most Improved Player of the Year. Which we have not talked about. <laughs> KCP wants max money. I love this intro. The fact that- Bulls Monday. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the, the hot fact, take. The fact that you just gave Dwayne Wade's age and that he's hungry in, 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 <laughs> a, in a dramatic commercial fashion style. That was that and was KCP pay that man his money. That was a, so who, so tell me who's gonna win. Who's gonna win? Ooh. Um, 
They don't give me favorites right now, so I can't really give you a good storyline on the favorite. But I, I want I want you to give me your take first. I need I need a second to think. I okay, gotta... well here's the thing, Corey. I don't know if I mean your dramatic fashion was super nice and everything, but honestly, this game just bores me to death, man. I mean, this is this is like okay, you got the big dog, and then. You, He's getting all the all the food. Then you got these two little chihuahuas in the back. They're kind of hungry, right? And they're down at they're down at the bottom, and they're just getting the scraps. This is this is two chihuahuas eating scraps, dude. They got they got a couple nice players on this team. Yeah, this is gonna be a this is a good fight for the bottom. But man, this is this is a scraps. Give me. Wow. But you know what? Well, I do well, this respect hey. to the bottom feeders. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm going, I'm going bulls on this one, bulls by five. And then you talked about, you think, what do you think, Reggie Jackson? Is he going to get benched? What, they going Ish Smith? I've, I mean, I've liked Ish Smith. I've seen him play a couple times. I saw him play when he was on New Orleans, and I think he's a pretty good point guard. I don't know. Reggie Jackson just seems indecisive right now with this, this career. Uh, all right. So I, I've, I've now made up my mind after your take. I am taking the Detroit Pistons. Oh, my. Who I physically, <laughs> mentally, and emotionally hate for so many reasons. Pretty much for the 2004 and 2005 playoffs where they eliminated my Indiana Pacers and Reggie Miller and Jermaine O'Neal. But nonetheless, hey, wait I am here. going with the Detroit Pistons at the Palace over the Chicago Bulls. KCP. Is great at home in Michigan. <laughs> hey, wait, he wait, will wait. go off. Wait we will the... see a <laughs> premier bottom feeder game of the week. <laughs> way to be the bigger person, dude. Way to be the bigger man. Take your. I had to pick the Pistons. I know I. Can, I don't like agreeing with you on games, so I'll take devil's advocate. How much? I actually kind of. How much? Give me a number. Pistons, what? Uh, know. Pistons by twenty. Eight. Eight. That's eight. You never know with these teams back and forth. But, hey, guys, we talked about a lot, and we did it on a Saturday, so sorry about that. But, hey, life happens, like Corey said. So next week we'll, we're going to give you just as great as the show. It doesn't even matter what day of the week it is, right, Corey? I mean, we're, we, we're we popping give, up. We give prime time material here at Central Intelligence. It doesn't matter what day of the week we're coming at you. We're coming at you with some, with some intelligence. <laughs> oh, oh, I like you. I like you. That hey, that's episode five. A quick five already, man. We hit the five mark, but it's been fun, and and next week's gonna be even better. But don't don't forget to follow along on at OTG um, on Twitter. Um, you know, Corey, like always, my man. It was uh, fun doing it with you, and we had some good conversations, some hot takes. Um, but hey, you be looking out for that that Heat Cavs game tonight. I will, Matt. You know, it was a pleasure. I love talking hoops with you, man. Central Intelligence has been a blast for these five episodes, like you've said. To everybody watching, if you're still watching, I really hope you're still watching because you missed <laughs> the best ending to a show you could have ever seen. Um, we'll be here next week, though, and we will be back on a Friday. So thank you guys for listening. Peace out.